The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more into the breach do we go, dear friends. Of course, as we start off at the show, we're up three points on the S&P cash. We got up to 2100, which is kind of where I thought that we would park uh, before the uh, Brit exit. We're down a little bit off that high, but uh, as I've said for the last couple of weeks, I think we are in the doldrums. Uh, that is a big nautical term about uh, where basically the northern and southern atmospheres and uh, climates actually hit. And it's uh, pretty much a area of very light winds for the most part. Uh, but because of uh, things that happen, occasional huge squalls, sometimes thunderstorms occur there uh, when uh, you get a little offsides action uh, from the north and south parts of the climate. But uh, I was, in fact, I was trying to find some neat little clip to uh, play on the show today. Couldn't really find anything. But uh, I did get sucked into that endless, bottomless pit of YouTube videos of uh, sailors going uh, across the, uh, the uh, doldrums. And it was very interesting to watch these guys. I could have played about a three-minute clip, uh, but I figured everybody would have nodded off. But I, I found it uh, incredibly interesting to see kind of what we're going through, I think, as traders. And that is uh, we're kind of going, okay. Why isn't this thing moving? Well, there are reasons why. Of course, mostly they have to do with hurry up and waiting. Uh, but uh, it's kind of tough. Of course, we always like to meet at this time of day. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Even though we meet at this time of day, the uh, action is probably going to be uh, late at night. We'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, got a lot of uh, things to go through today, so uh, don't get uh, don't be uh, running off there and uh, tuning in to some Netflix channel to watch uh, uh, the latest edition of some uh, TV show. We've got uh, a action packed and information packed show for you today and tomorrow. Uh, and, of course, this is the time where you can have a little bit of breathing room that you're not just reacting. You can think. Uh, one of the uh, original uh, big men of uh, the Wall Street uh, said uh, to be a good speculator, it takes uh, both uh, forethought and uh, something else. Now I'm forgetting. Uh, intelligence, and for, uh, intelligence and forethought. Uh, he said, though, that most traders use neither. And uh, this is a time where we can actually think about what we're going to do, the possible scenarios and outcomes, and figure out what's going on. And I have a pretty good idea, I think, what is uh, going to happen. But I don't have an abiding belief in that. And uh, without abiding a beliefs, and where the market's headed or an individual stock, I cannot hold it. I will not hold it. It will not stand. If given to me, I will sell. If, uh, well, I can't even do the uh, Johnson thing. If elected, I will not serve. But uh, eh, we'll think about that. Let's get started and get a little bit of history. Get it uh, in because, of course, if you don't know your history, you are doomed to repeat it. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is, and we had a lot of stuff going on today. In 1988, Dell Computer goes public. 
by a then 23-year-old college dropout, Michael Dell, who started uh, putting PCs together in his dorm room. It was public on the NASDAQ at an initial price of $8.50. In 1979, a company run by Mr. Marcus and Blank opens a, a home improvement outlet next to some Treasure Island stores in Atlanta. Today, it's known as Home Depot, one of the biggest world's largest retailing outfits. And uh, they kind of figured out over time that uh, as they kind of started, they were a retrofit company uh, for uh, uh, redoing your house because you stayed in it. Uh, then they went to, and uh, with a housing boom, uh, followed that trend. They are back to the retrofit upgrade, fixing existing houses, although housing starts have come back somewhat from the uh, disastrous blow up of 2008. And in 19, uh, in actually 1775, Congress authorizes its first issuance of continental currency uh, within a year or a year and a half. The major use of continental currency was to uh, be put together with uh, wheat glue and or uh, other kinds of glue, kind of Elmer's glue, and to be used to make casts when people broke their arm. Yes, the uh, currency was worthless, meaningless, probably like most everything happening today in the market, it will vanish and not be thought of in a, well, for a long time. But uh, that is today in history. Of course, uh, I've been posting this in the Tiger's Den, but I wanted to make sure uh, that I had this up here uh, for people uh, that had not uh, been uh, in the Tiger's Den today. Uh, the calendar for tomorrow uh, starts this way for the uh, British vote. I hate even using bre Brexit. I'm feeling like I'm saying J-Lo. She's 46 now. Don't you think she gets a little bit more respect, Jennifer? Lopez. I, I hate. Maybe if you're 20 years old, you can go with one of these goofy things. But I don't know. I'm going to take a stand. I'm going to just say the British exit from now on and uh, not use any... Cutie pie shortcuts. Anyway, uh, when what we actually see, of course, is uh, the polling stations open uh, at uh, 7 a.m. tomorrow, which is 2 a.m. our time. Uh, by uh, 10 p.m. their time, or actually at 10 p.m., uh, the polling stations close. Uh, that's 5 p.m. our time. About uh, 11.30 p.m. their time, 6.30 our time, the announcements on the voter turnout, how many votes were actually cast. Many people believe that a greater out, uh, a higher outturn of votes will uh, mean that uh, the stays win. I don't think from what I've read, there is any kind of uh, cause and effect. Uh, as they say, uh, causation is, is uh, no, uh, correlation is not causation. I don't think that there's anything to that, although a lot of people are spreading that rumor. In fact, they were spreading the rumor it wasn't even close, uh, just what, on Friday last week? By 7.30 our time, results expected for the first counting areas. By uh, 10 to 11, results from half the counting areas are in. Uh, by uh, midnight, about 80% of the counting areas will have reported results, which is uh, about 11 time. Anyway, 2 a.m. tomorrow, night all votes will be counted tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with tom o'brien and using his best-selling book the art of timing the trade your ultimate trading mastery system david white has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, takes your phone calls now, now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 should i stay or should i go now should i stay or should i go now Yes, will they stay or will they go? Either way, there will be trouble, but uh, we will move on. Anyway, by 2 a.m. Uh, tomorrow night, all votes are likely to have been counted. I will be staying uh, up very early tonight and going to bed early. I guess I'll be stay staying up early. I'll be going to bed early uh, so I can stay up late tomorrow night. Uh, probably be some fairly good trading. And I uh, hope to see many of you smiling faces in the den. Of course, uh, today is really the uh, start of the U.S. political election. It is a blood sport. Uh, the amount of lies upon lies that we're going to be subjected to are unfathomable. But uh, hopefully we will be able uh, to uh, be cool and calm and objective when it comes to the stock market, and uh, probably a good warning for me. I am highly agitatable in my uh, advancing age, uh, but uh, I suspect what we're going to see, uh, or at least what we've seen today, uh, is just the beginning of what will happen. Um, I'm looking at expanding my cable uh, channel um, for the uh, summer and into the fall uh, for anything that does not have commercials and probably the best way for me to avoid it only read it and uh, kind of a, you know, reject uh, them shoving the ads at me of course uh, the big news for many on wall street today was elon musk's uh, push to uh, buy solar city from his other company tesla Solar City is run by his brother-in-law. Uh, kind of very interesting to see uh, patronatism uh, in big companies. Uh, Solar City has been a wart, a pimple, a uh, disgusting boil uh, on the, the stock market, mostly because it was a company 
that was designed to lose money from day one. It uh, never was going to make money, at least uh, unless something rapidly changed in the cost of uh, solar cells. It is highly shorted by one of the smartest men in the street that uh, I have not caught lying to me so far. doesn't mean that he hasn't, but uh, I can't think of a time in 15 years when Jim Chanos has uh, prevaricated uh, his cause when shorting a company. He pretty much has them dead to rights. Solar City, of course, he said was a... Uh, a play uh, mostly on loans and, of course, uh, putting second mortgages on houses. Uh, solar, no matter what anybody wants to tell me, you can call me up and tell me what you want. I will uh, actually impose reality and uh, reject what you say. I've read too many papers and seen too much. Solar power is not uh, anywhere close uh, to being either on a day basis or even on a longer macro basis uh, affordable. It still costs about four times uh, the price to use solar cells as you can uh, use uh, natural gas to produce electricity. Uh, that is over time. And of course, right now with almost no interest rates, it isn't a good thing. Imagine when interest rates go up and they try to do that. Uh, it's only existed because a lot of well-wishers or uh, pie-in-the-sky people think that maybe if we could just get this thing going, then we'll get off of uh, coal and uh, natural gas. Uh, it it uh, rather predictably never came to pass. Uh, electronics are very interesting. Uh, there is that Moore's Law of them getting twice as fast and twice as many transistors at half the cost every 18 months. Unfortunately, chemistry does not move that fast. Electronics does. And, of course, when we come down to it, if you made the most expensive solar cell that you could, uh, which uh, NASA does, you get about 30% efficiency, maybe 32% efficiency. That's almost the theoretical limit. Also, problems with solar cells uh, have to do with uh, them working in a very narrow range of uh, light. Uh, they do not get all the light that we see every day. Uh, they are basically tuned to a very narrow frequency. Some of them uh, in the red to uh, ultraviolet range. Uh, so they are only getting about a third of the visible light that we look at every day. Uh, they also have a tendency to basically wear out in about 10 years. Putting them outside does not help. And uh, probably the best argument has been the one from The Economist magazine, where because there is no way to store that energy from solar cells effectively, and I'm not going to say that Musk's uh, super expensive battery pack comes anywhere close to being effective. Again, that's about eight times uh, as, as expensive as getting uh, energy from natural gas. Um, it just ridiculous uh, idea that somehow just because everybody wishes it to be uh, economically viable that it will be. Well, of course, everybody knew this was coming. We had uh, uh, Mr. Jim Chanos alert us to the fact that Solar City was going to blow up this year. I think what we see from Tesla today and Mr. Musk is a effort to cover up the fact that this is going to blow up. Uh, he has three major companies. The best one that I want to invest in, of course, is the only one that is not public. Uh, Tesla, uh, a great car, maybe a couple of years too soon. Maybe they will be able to move along. The problem I see is that they are showing 25% margin, and that is non-GAAP profits. Uh, my guess is that when we really get down to it, their profit will be somewhere between the, the averages of all car companies, which is about 6 to 8%. Um, we've talked about companies like Apple. Just seeing a couple of percent uh, drop in its gross margin uh, for its phones and seeing 30% taken off the top. That, uh, you know, when you go into the barber, 
You say, just take a little off the top. 30% is not what you think of. You think uh, maybe a quarter of an inch, a half an inch. Uh, just clean it up. Anyway, uh, a lot of these are great pie-in-the-sky businesses. Uh, they're either, in Tesla's case, horribly overpriced. In Solar City's uh, case, a disaster and bankruptcy ready to happen. So why would Tesla do this? As I said just a minute ago, I suspect the problem is that if Solar City blew up, that he thought that maybe Tesla's stock would also take a dive. On the back of the envelope for many years, uh, if you looked at this company and uh, 10 years of forward growth, uh, I would pri price Tesla's stock at somewhere around 40 to 45 bucks. Uh, stocks don't always uh, match the reality of the underlying company. Um, all we have to do is uh, talk about iOmega for a while, or we can talk of other stocks. Pet.com. Not uh, Tesla's not a pot. Uh, a uh, Pet.com, but eh, maybe an iOmega. We'll be back after this. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. a number of ways we've had the discussion before um, but uh, Tesla stock down uh, mostly because I think that he thinks this is the lever uh, less of two evils ie solar city going out of business uh, would and going bankrupt would put a pall over the stock at Tesla uh, and actually make it even worse 
Uh, but it's very tough for me to see uh, that he can keep this going on very long. Uh, Tesla's battery factory is now going to open up four months, if not six months late. Uh, Mr. Musk in Tesla has continually overpromised and under-delivered. Uh, every time he does this in the past, he has taken to Twitter and come up with some kind of brand new technology that he's coming out with Monday. Anything to run the shorts out of his company. Uh, this has become much more overt with this. And of course, he doesn't do anything on Twitter because the SEC told him to stop. But uh, we will find out. Uh, the proof will be in the pudding, but it will be year or years down the line. Uh, before we see prices, uh, Tesla stock actually reflect probably true reality. Apple uh, has its own issues, and I'm giving just a little bit more background from the uh, Tech Insider out here today. Uh, but one of the problems with Apple, uh, we talked about it briefly, I think, last week, uh, and uh, is that they've been able to destroy several markets. Uh, they've destroyed pretty much uh, the recording uh, music business. Uh, it now makes about one-tenth that it did in 2005. Uh, they have moved on to some other businesses and destroyed them, leaving nothing but uh, destruction and a wake in its wake. We, I've had a, at least a thesis that Apple TV will never become a big deal mostly because the people in the content industry are the same people or hang out with the same people that are in the music business and have seen the uh, uh, burnt, uh, burnt uh, what do they call it, scorched earth uh, that Apple has left behind them in the music business. They do not want that in the video business, and it has been very tough to get Apple uh, to get people on board. I keep on hearing this giant thing of Apple TV will uh, get everybody. Uh, but uh, you, at best, frenemies, at worst, enemies uh, for that. Now Apple has a new battleground of people that it will leave in its wake. Uh, that is the people that have been writing apps. They have so uh, inundated people with apps uh, that they have stopped buying them. Uh, the normal people that would uh, look at somewhere between five and ten apps over the last few years have now gotten down, depending on which survey you want to look at, at either two or one maybe new app per month. With a two million apps in its app store, it has become increasingly uh, uh, visible that everybody that uh, thought that they could write and maybe get a program for Apple uh, will go broke very shortly. Uh, at the uh, developer conference last week, they announced the App Store will support a much wider variety of options, including trials, reduced commission after a year, and subscription-based items. Uh, this may help out a great deal, but my guess is that once you've destroyed something, it is very hard to put the genie back in the bottle. Uh, and um, I think you're probably going to see a lot of those app uh, people move on to uh, Facebook. Uh, and uh, just an opinion, but to all the people that couldn't wait to lather all over Apple, um, does Apple still have a lot of uh, very good developers? The answer is yes, but uh, there is a thing called a line of business application. That is like the application that your bank writes for you or for your cell phone, your smartphone. And okay, they don't care. It's a small percentage. They spend a million dollars developing that app. Uh, they, you are their customer. They've got to do it to get you and keep you. Uh, if you are writing some kind of new word processor, if you're writing some kind of new music app, if you're writing anything else that would sell for five or ten or fifty bucks, the chances of you selling that have become infinitely less than just six months ago. Half of what they were three months ago, literally the. Uh, uh, the App Store is turning into a desert. It was never that huge amount of money for Apple, but uh, at the same time, it doesn't help them in a declining iPhone market to not have the, uh, the money coming in for the App Store. Um, I am uh, thinking that maybe there will be a little bit more downside uh, from Apple than what I had thought of previously. 
Um, you know, 101 is probably still the high. Could it break this low of 90, that 92, 93 area and go lower, uh, maybe into the 80s? Uh, if they don't get something else out before this year, if this trend continues, it will be very tough for them to continue on. I know they're going to try to push Apple TV before the end of the year. I still suspect uh, that it will not be a complete solution uh, and they will have continuing problems. Uh, we talked about Facebook, uh, of course, on uh, Monday. Uh, Zuckerberg uh, basically told uh, shareholders that uh, it doesn't matter how many shares that he sells, he will always have 100% control of Facebook. I have compared him in the past to uh, the uh, uh, the movie uh, uh, about when, uh, uh, what am I thinking, uh, Randolph Hearst uh, and uh, having total control, Randolph Hearst, if you did not know, owned just about every newspaper in America. Uh, he was able to even kill a man in 1938. He shot him in the head. Uh, they were all, uh, he and Orson Welles and a few other people, including, uh, what's the uh, original guy? I'm trying to remember his name now uh, that was in all the uh, movies before the talkie, the silent movies. Uh, he had the little Hitler-like mustache. Someone will probably uh, tell me who it is. I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, anybody in the den? No, Charlie Chaplin. Anyway, Charlie Chaplin... Uh, was apparently running around with, uh, with uh, Hearst's girlfriend, uh, and they were on his big 180-foot yacht. Uh, it was late at night, 1 or 2 in the morning. He thought he had caught uh, Charlie Chaplin coming out of the uh, bedroom of his girlfriend and shot the man. Uh, it was quickly covered up, and uh, the gentleman was uh, said to have died from food poisoning. Uh, it was a lead poisoning. Uh, he was shooting at uh, Charlie Chaplin and uh, later pretty much uh, confirmed by Orson Welles and many others. Of course, uh, Citizen Kane is the thinly veiled version of uh, Randolph Hearst. But uh, I worry that we get a few of these guys that are literally answerable to no one and have the kind of power that Hearst has, uh, and uh, it only can make me think of that saying, absolute power corrupts absolutely, and uh, maybe that will be it. We'll look at some charts here for the rest of the show. We'll uh, talk just a minute about Facebook when we come back, and something that Mr. Zuckerberg is doing that I've done for years. We'll be back in just, a, just after this brief, brief commercial timeout. Of trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments? Then now is a great time to get a two week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, many commodities are trading at relative lows. And now you can take advantage with EvaBank's new limited-time, five-year, market-safe currency comeback CD. This indexed and U.S. dollar-denominated CD offers 100% principal protection and is based on the equally rated performance of currencies of Australia, Canada, Chile, Mexico, and South Africa. These five countries are especially rich in commodities and the respective currencies are poised to do well should commodity prices begin to recover. Keep in mind that no APY or periodic rate of interest is paid on the CD. Don't miss out on this innovative new financial opportunity. 
CDs must be opened and funded by the upcoming July 14th deadline. To apply online and learn more about the CD, including product terms and disclosures, visit everbank.com forward slash TFNN now. This advertisement is sponsored content. EverBank is a member FDIC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And uh, just one thing, uh, I got some laughs uh, maybe a year and a half ago, maybe even two years ago, uh, where I had put uh, tape and a piece of paper over the cameras and I had put hot melt glue in the holes for the microphone of my tablets. I said, uh, you know what? Uh, guess what? Uh, they can easily tap any of those things. It is nothing more than a bug in anybody's house. Uh, until they start putting little sliding things across them, I'm not a big fan. Uh, in fact, the uh, webcam that I'm using right now is plugged into the front of my computer. When I finish the show, it gets unplugged. Uh, and uh, even the uh, little microphones in it that I don't use are filled with hot melt glue, too. Um, eh, who needs anybody peering on me? I don't think anybody would, but it still gives me the creeps. Uh, but Mr. Zuckerberg uh, had some pictures taken of him in the last couple of days. And his, uh, his little laptop is buttoned up just like my tablets and my laptop. Cover, remember to cover those cameras and uh, make sure that you can't be heard because they're nothing more than bugs floating around your room. Uh, that is a mad, 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 mad market. Let's uh, take a look at some stocks here today. Uh, do, 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 do. What do we got? Uh, got a lot of movers out here today. Adobe. Uh, not. Uh, when do we give it the loser horn today? Yeah, I think uh, solar. Uh, Tesla probably gets the losing horn. We'll look at that chart in a minute. We'll look at Adobe. They really drove this up. Uh, it has been kind of a theme, as I've told you many times. I don't watch CNBC so much as uh, have closed captioning on it. I kind of fast forward through it to see what uh, the opposition, I'll, I'll call it opposition research, uh, has to say. Most of the time, I know those folks are lying. Uh, but uh, very interesting to see yesterday and the day before how many people were pumping Adobe up into this earnings. It's become a regular theme. I think maybe this is the third stock in the last week that everybody's been pounding the table on only to see it drop and drop rather uh, succinctly. I think it's uh, is it, uh, not American Express. I think it's Federal Express uh, also that we'll look at today. Um, but everybody was pounding the table yesterday saying, bye, bye, only higher, only higher. Uh, I kind of get the same thing with uh, the bears now, only lower, only lower, only to see them bounce. Um, it makes me a little nervous out here. Adobe uh, down today, what do we have for volume already? Eight million shares. That is fairly good. What's... Uh, Let's get back here to a little bit uh, smaller time frame, maybe six months. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, on six months, uh, you can see it. 
you were up and tried to bang against this March 18th high for a while. That was 98 bucks with 12 million shares. Went above it with 3.4 million shares. Went into it yesterday with 6.5 million shares. So still you were trying to attack that March 18th high with half the volume. Um, I don't know if I would have been short. I certainly wouldn't have been long. I didn't see the risk reward in any of these. Uh, but uh, continues to be very interesting to uh, see everybody, uh, maybe the best description of financial infotainment like CNBC uh, and uh, Bloomberg and Fox uh, Business, although I haven't watched Fox Business in a while, or Bloomberg. I just kind of fast forward through CNBC and see who's lying about what, for the most part. Occasionally, there's probably one or two things uh, a day that actually might be worth something. And most of the time, I've already read them on my RSS feeds. Uh, but uh, big volume, uh, you've got this gap uh, that goes back to the uh, March 18th gap up. And that's probably where this is going. So you can look at the low 90s for Adobe systems fairly quickly. Uh, CVTI, another one out here, uh, getting the loser. I almost give the loser horn. I'll look at Tesla for that. But it has broken through the previous low. This is Covenant Transportation Group, CVTI, blown through with, uh, what, eight times the volume already. It's not a big volume stock, but interesting nonetheless. Federal Express uh, down. Uh, it does have a great deal of volume. I think we're going to probably see many of these uh, bigger Dow-style stocks come back and fill these gaps. Uh, they may not be that bad. In fact, Federal Express might be okay uh, on a pullback here. We've got to watch to see how the volume comes in in the next few days. But somewhere around 147 to 148, I suspect, might be an interesting play in this. It did gap up on March 17th, had uh, 8.9 million shares, 9, 8.9. Uh, and it's just down on 3.6 million shares, which is enough to break the May 16th low out here. So I'm not saying that, but I do suspect that this gap will act as some level of support. There is actually a double gap out here that goes back to the fourth gap down the 4th of January, the beginning of this year. That kind of looks to me like you've got a lot of things saying about 147, 148 is the support level in Federal Express if the market does not move that bad. Some comments out of uh, Hewlett Packard has it down a little bit today. Uh, it is another one of these that gapped up with some energy. This one on May 26 had almost 30 million shares. Day on today, not too bad, uh, 13 million shares. You'd want to think about this one, possibly about $12.25. So keep an eye on that. It's too cheap a stock to short, so I don't see anything in that. Interdigital down volume is not all that exciting. I don't think we're going to spend a great deal on that one. KBH out here, not a great deal happening on this one after earnings. You got to think a little bit uh, going on. Oh, yeah, are we back? Yeah, maybe that was, yeah, something happened there. Um, KB Homes, a uh, nice little test of the top here today. A volume may be a little, eh, maybe okay. Certainly not going to be a sign of strength breaking through the April 21st high that had 6.8 million shares. Um, still seeing, oh, I see what happened. Uh, they're saying they still are seeing the old chart. That's because for some reason I got uh, hot calmed and hot bombed. So give me just a second. Where is that? There it is. Okay, now we should be going on. Uh, do, do, do. Everything cool now, Mr. Engineer? He's a very slow typist. Got it. Okay. Uh, 6.8 million shares, $14.92. Uh, and, of course, we're going to go into that with similar volume. Certainly, it looks like today we are not going to hold that high. So you want to watch out in the coming days for how the housing market works. Lazy Boy, one of my favorite companies of all time, actually breaking a previous high. Looks like it's going to have the kind of volume and hold its high. Maybe the thought is maybe we won't be buying so many new homes, but uh, maybe all those sales of Lazy Boys for Father's Day uh, will make the next quarter look good. March 30th, 70, what is it? 
March 30th, uh, $27.32. We got to $27.70. We've got some good volume. A nice looking candle out here. Not too bad. When we come back, the loser horn is waiting in the wings for Tesla. We'll look at Solar City. We'll think about taking a trip across America in a Winnebago. Boy, it's so exciting. I almost hate for this show to end today. We'll be back in a brief, brief, brief moment. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as uh, we get lost in America, oh, what a great movie. Yeah, I, I always bring this movie up and find that so many or so few people have ever seen it. But uh, an absolute great movie, Lost in America. Uh, Winnebago's uh, WGO uh, up to its high. Lots of volume. Does not look like it's able to hold its previous high of March 29th. It came in at 2309. Looks like it's going to close below it uh, with the S&P actually flat on the day. Um, I In my newsletter this morning had a... Uh, Eh, nice little movie poster, uh, another great movie called Dead Calm. I was expecting a very flat market today that we got up to uh, eh, 2,100, probably not shocking, but I'm not expecting any big movement until, of course, after uh, the vote tomorrow. But, uh, uh, you know, again, there are a handful of companies that are reaching escape velocity, go higher, 
Uh, most of them do look like Winnebago, and that is nice moves higher, uh, huge volume, uh, but closing back into the trading range. Uh, we'll look at uh, the uh, Tesla here. Uh, and it's down below the 203.66 level. That was the May 12th low. Um, they tried to rally it a little bit earlier in the day. It's closing back lower. Um, energy is significantly more on this next down leg off this June 8 high. It has broken the previous low on much lighter volume. And, of course, uh, this opens you right back to this 141.05 area from February 9th and the 143 area from, uh, from uh, yeah, February 12th. So you've got a couple of those. Uh, Solar City. Um, up a little bit, but of course, uh, pretty uh, unsubstantially. Uh, uh, this does not change Jim Chanus's uh, position. He, or most people believe that he is short this somewhere around the 57 to 58 dollar range. So he's at least sitting on a 50 percent uh, winner at the moment. Uh, my guess is that uh, if it gets bought out, he will probably, of course, have to take his shorts off. But uh, the question of whether or not uh, this deal will ever make it uh, through is also questionable. Uh, I suspect that uh, the way that the market has reacted to Tesla's uh, purchase or thought of purchasing SolarCity uh, gives you everything you need to know about the way investors think about it and uh, whether or not Mr. Uh, Musk has done this just to try to scare some people out, as he's done so readily on Twitter in the past, or if this is a real and substantial offer. I don't think it has anything to do with what the Solar City CEO has to do. Uh, it was a patronage job to get the CEO position, in my opinion. So it is what Mr. Musk decides that uh, actually matters. Uh, do we have anything we wanted to look at? Oh, we got about one minute to go. Uh, that'll be it uh, for today. I just wanted to bring this up because uh, someone uh, uh, actually, uh, yeah, what, what, let me find it here, uh, was making a uh, comment in the den. Uh, I am all cash in my short-term trades. I've got some trades that uh, we have some st substantial money in in the longer-term newsletter. I would not be playing it short-term here. I don't think I have an edge. Uh, but one of the best quotes from Jesse Livermore is this. It was a change in my own attitude that was of supreme importance to me. It taught me little by little the essential difference between betting on fluctuations and anticipating inevitable advances and decline between gambling and speculating. Uh, in the short term, I would have to say that anything I would do until we get news is gambling. Uh, I wish to speculate. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.